Hey, what's up everyone? It is I, the man, the myth, the mustache. Tim here, and I have got a brand new video for you. Welcome to part six of what if Deku could use hockey. I just wanted to drop in and say hello and remind you to sit back and relax because you are in for a treat. Now, enough about me. Let's get into the story. All Might stood there, quietly, with a shocked expression. He simply couldn't wrap his head around what Midoriya and Rayleigh were explaining to him. Spiritual energy, will, and a power that could be used without a quirk. The symbol of peace found it hard to take the master and students seriously. This hockey that they were talking about sounded too fictional in his ears. How could anyone without a quirk make himself near indestructible with nothing but willpower? All Might looked at the duo wearing a perplexed expression as he spoke. Sorry, but I don't believe a single word that you're saying. Are you trying to pull my leg? Midoriya and Rayleigh both wore blank expressions until they looked at each other and shared a similarly annoyed expression. The silver-haired geezer then stood up from his seat, looking straight at All Might. All right, Blondie, buff up. All Might looked on confused as he obeyed Rayleigh's demand. Good. Now punch me in the face with as much strength as you can, the silver-haired geezer said. All Might was even more confused now, but he quickly became bewildered when he realized that Rayleigh was being serious. What? All Might exclaimed. Rayleigh didn't change his expression at all. He just crossed his arm as he boldly uttered, Hit me! All Might looked around the room only to find that Midoriya was barely holding in his laughter. That is when he spoke against the old man. No, I'm not hitting an 80-year-old- Hit me! The geezer shouted, interrupting All Might. All Might had enough of this argument, so he decided it was Rayleigh's fault if he hurt himself. He reeled his fist back, charging up properly before he threw it into the old man's face. A slight gust of wind exploded outwards, as the window panes shook from the sudden blast. When they stopped shaking, one could see the result of the collision, and it proceeded to shake both Recovery Girl and All Might down to their cores. Silver's Rayleigh, the quirkless geezer of almost 80 years, hadn't moved an inch. He was completely unaffected by the punch. He hadn't even blinked or broken his expression. He just stood there, with All Might's fist still in his face, as a smile crept over him. All Might was completely still, until he started to tremble. The trembling quickly turned into a violent shake as he took a deep breath, before bellowing in pain and agony. Recovery Girl watched in panic and shock as the number one hero held his fist with his other hand while jumping around the infirmary. What was that? The screaming hero asked, before he proceeded to grunt in pain. Rayleigh just gave his trademark smile as he answered. That was armament hockey. I used to cover my face before your fist made contact. All Might was in disbelief. For a second, he thought that he was hitting a block of solid iron, not a man's face. He just couldn't believe that this, the thing that almost made him break his hand, was the result of hockey. So, you can make yourselves unbreakable see almost everything and <clears throat> knock people out by just looking at them? All Might asked. Midoriya and Rayleigh looked at each other before Midoriya answered. Yes, but its powers depend on how strong our will is. All Might only responded by nodding and briefly uttering, I see. The master and student looked at each other once more before they burst out laughing. The room remained like this for a while, with Midoriya and Rayleigh laughing while All Might kept grunting, until Recovery Girl cleared her throat to get their attention. Everyone turned their heads towards her as she stood by the infirmary door and said, You have visitors, before sliding it open. What waited behind the door surprised Midoriya. Almost everyone in Class 1A was waiting there, and they all rushed in while calling out his name. Deku, are you okay? Uraraka shouted, showing how worried she was for him. 
Midoriya just smiled at the brunette as he said, I'm fine, I'm just tired, and I got a scratch on my arm. He said as he held up his bandaged left arm. Uraraka sighed in relief before a smile had formed on her face. I can't believe that you managed to defeat those villains, and you look so cool while doing it. Uraraka suddenly said, smiling brightly. Midoriya's cheeks turned a slight shade of pink when he heard the compliment as he scratched the back of his head while muttering, Thanks, but I wouldn't have made it if I didn't have any help. Midoriya then pointed towards his master, who was giggling at Midoriya's pinkish cheeks. The class turned their attention to the old man as he introduced himself. Silver's Rayleigh, nice to meet y'all. The class carefully inspected the old man from top to bottom. They already knew that he was Midoriya's master, but they were curious over a few things. For how long have you been training Midoriya? Ida asked, which seemed to be what most of the class wanted to know. Rayleigh just smiled at them as he answered. I've been training him since he was four years old. The class was shocked. The fact that Midoriya had been trained in things like combat since he was four only explains why he could handle his own against a villain. But it was also incredible, because they couldn't even begin to imagine how much pain he must have gone through to reach his current skill level. What exactly did you teach Midoriya? Ida asked again, wondering how Midoriya managed to become so strong without a quirk. He wouldn't get a satisfying answer though, as Rayleigh simply answered, I taught him what he needed to surpass those with quirks. Ida was a little shocked to hear this. It was true that Midoriya needed to surpass those with quirks if he ever wanted to become a great hero. He had already surpassed a few of his classmates in some categories. But Rayleigh's words sounded as if they held a bigger goal, that Midoriya wanted to surpass even the strongest pro heroes. The class continued to chat with Midoriya and his master, asking them many questions about their training and fighting style. The class was so into the conversation that they almost failed to notice someone walking up behind them. I'm glad to see you all in good shape, the person said. The class turned their attention towards the source of the voice, only to see a white bear-like mouse speaking to them. The class immediately recognized the creature as the principal of UA, Nezu. Nezu looked around the infirmary until he walked over to both Midoriya and Rayleigh, then he said, Mr. Rayleigh, young Midoriya, on behalf of Yue, I must thank you both for protecting our students and teachers, the bear-like creature said as he bowed his head slightly. Both Rayleigh and Midoriya shook it off as the former responded. There's no need for that and you know it, the old man said with a broad smile on his face. Nezu only nodded in response before he turned to the rest of 1A. Since you're all here, I might as well inform you that the school will be closed for tomorrow so that we can run a proper investigation. The class had mixed responses to this. Some were sad, while others were happy. Midoriya was neither sad nor happy. He just thought that he would use this free time to train and get stronger. Don't even think about it, Rayleigh said, looking straight at Midoriya. The green-haired boy gave a look of confusion as Rayleigh continued. You've been through a near-death experience. Take some time to rest, and we'll continue training once school starts again. Midoriya was shocked to hear those words come from his master's mouth. Rayleigh was usually the person that encouraged Midoriya to train even after breaking his body. So hearing him utter anything related to resting caught Midoriya off guard. Rayleigh caught his student further off guard by patting his head instead. You surprised me today. So you deserve some rest. Midoriya's confusion quickly turned into a bright smile, bleeding with joy. Class 1A, mainly Ida and Uraraka, were both surprised and happy to see their normally stoic classmate give off such a bright smile. Two days passed, and Class 1A was already back in the classroom. They were all mingling and talking about various things before the teacher would arrive. Midoriya just sat at his desk in silence. He had mostly followed Rayleigh's order to rest, but he found that to be difficult, so he ended up doing some light muscle training just so that he wouldn't be too bored. His left arm was recovering nicely, 
although he still wore a bandage over it. The class kept chatting with each other while sitting at their desks. Some of them wondered who was going to teach them, but that question was quickly answered when the door flung open. Good morning, class, a bandaged and mummified Aizawa said as he entered the room. Everyone looked shocked, for they believed that Aizawa would be recovering for much longer. Sir, are you okay? Ashido asked, but Aizawa tiredly answered, I'm fine. Recovery girl just went overboard in her treatment, but my health isn't important, because your fight isn't over yet. The class felt a bit of tension within the air. The way that Aizawa had spoken those last few words made it feel like something big was about to happen, and some believed that it would be another villain attack. The UA Sports Festival is coming up, Aizawa said, breaking the tension with everyone. The class calmed down as some started getting excited while others questioned if it was a good idea. Sir, is it really a good idea to hold the festival after the villain attack? Mineta asked, very worried. The sports festival is too big of an event to be canceled, and it's our way of showing that a villain attack won't affect us. The hero agencies will be watching your performance, so it's your opportunity to prove yourselves. Aizawa answered. The class got even more excited than before. They began to cheer and roar, ready to prove their worth. Aizawa began walking towards the door as he said, Class dismissed. Then he suddenly stopped, before he looked back at Midoriya. Midoriya, I wish to speak with you in private, the mummified teacher said, before walking out of the classroom. Midoriya quickly got out of his seat, following Aizawa. Once outside, the two stopped in the hallway where the mummified teacher spoke. You're quirkless, which means that you need to prove yourself more than the others. Midoriya looked as stoic as ever as he responded by saying, I know, you don't have to tell me that. Aizawa was unfazed by this as he continued. We decided to let you use any support item of your liking to give you a fighting chance against your opponents. Midoriya was a little surprised to hear this. It was well known that support items weren't allowed without the proper paperwork, and the teachers were willing to let Midoriya use whatever he wanted. Their choice was understandable too, since worklessness was a handicap that normally stops a person from reaching greater heights. That is how things play out for most quirkless people. But Midoriya is not like most quirkless people. The green-haired boy returned to his usual stoic expression as he said, That's a very generous offer, but I have to decline. Aizawa's eyes widened, for he had expected a much different response. You do realize that your chance of winning will be critically reduced if you decline, the teacher said. Midoriya looked a little annoyed as he answered, Do you have no faith in me whatsoever? Or do you just underestimate me? Aizawa was even more shocked to hear this response, but Midoriya continued before he could say anything. If I win by using support items, it only proves that I can't do anything without help. I'm quirkless, so I need to show the world that I can stand up and win when the odds are stacked against me. The green-haired boy continued, his face now showing a hint of determination. Aizawa was impressed. The idea of letting Midoriya use support items was to help him, but the teen thought so far as to say that performing well without any form of help is a better way to prove your worth. Not only that, it also meant that Midoriya was very confident in his abilities. Are you saying you will win the festival, even without our help? Aizawa asked, waiting in anticipation for the answer he wanted. Midoriya looked at him with a smile as he answered. Of course, why wouldn't I? Much to Aizawa's pleasure, the mummified teacher smiled through his bandages so that Midoriya could see it as he said, Then I can't wait to see what you can do. Midoriya smiled back at his teacher, showing more of his confidence. All right, you can go back to class now, Aizawa said, breaking the silence of the moment. Midoriya obliged as he slowly made his way back to the classroom. He slid the door open, only to be met by powerful roars and bellows of excitement. 
It all looked slightly bizarre to Midoriya, since everyone was so fired up. But the thing that surprised him most was the feral Uraraka waving her fist around while shouting, I'm gonna do my best! She then noticed Midoriya as she shouted, Deku, I'm gonna do my best! Midoriya didn't know what to think of the situation. On one end, he wondered what he walked into, while on the other, his cheeks turned a little pink as he quietly muttered, a complete personality shift, but still cute somehow, to himself, so that no one else could hear it. The students had two weeks to properly train for the festival, and Midoriya wasn't going to let that time be for naught. He and Rayleigh got to work immediately, but it was very excruciating and gave very slow progress. A week and a half had already passed, but Midoriya still couldn't manage to reach the results they were looking for. The training focused on improving observation hockey in combat-related situations, so that no one would be able to sneak up and hurt him like Shigaraki had done. This training, however, was one of the most painful and cruel things in the world. They were in a forest, and Midoriya was already in a lot of pain. He was wearing a blindfold and was forced to dodge Rayleigh's oncoming attacks. The old man was hiding his presence, making it near impossible to sense him as he bashed Midori in the head with a hockey-infused club. Midori was struggling really hard. They had done this for hours, and Midori was already covered in blood and had numerous bumps on his head. It was hard, but Midori never gave up, regardless of how much pain he felt. Ow! The green-haired boy shouted, with a lot more pain than usual, as Rayleigh bashed his club into his skull. Again! Rayleigh shouted and Midoriya forced himself back into position. The session continued, and it started off quite decently. Midoriya dodged the first attack, but was caught off guard by a second one. Ow! He exclaimed when the club made contact with his head, and Rayleigh only shouted, AGAIN! in response. Midoriya was once again back into position, trembling from exhaustion. This time, he showed more improvement, dodging as much as three attacks until Rayleigh landed another hit. Ow! He shouted for a millionth time, and Rayleigh responded with, AGAIN! for a millionth time. Midoriya forced himself into position, but his exhaustion was too great. He could almost feel himself turn weightless, and on the verge of blacking out. It felt like he had removed invisible ankle weights while also losing his energy, the green-haired boy didn't know what this feeling was, but he didn't question it too much. For some reason, deep in his core, Midoriya could feel another attack coming his way, so he did everything he could to dodge. It took almost everything he had, but the attack missed him by a hair, and he could somehow feel that Rayleigh was smiling. Midoriya was confused by what he felt, and the fact that Rayleigh was standing still without hiding his presence anymore so he took his blindfolds off. Sure enough, Rayleigh was smiling. I was hiding my presence, and you began dodging just a split second before I started attacking. Midoriya was shocked to hear this. In his head, he was barely dodging that attack, but really had said that he had done something similar to precognition. The green-haired boy quickly shook it off, however, because he felt that Rayleigh wanted him to explain how he did it. Honestly, I don't know how I did it. I just felt that attack coming, and I felt that you were smiling, Midoriya said while scratching the back of his head. Rayleigh's smile grew even wider as he continued. I believe that you're gaining the ability to sense people's emotions. Soon, you might be able to see into the future. Midoriya was shocked to hear his progress put into words, but he still failed to understand Rayleigh's meaning with it. The old man only giggled at his student's ignorance as he told Midoriya what he meant. You're ready for the sports festival. Midoriya's shock grew deeper. Then it turned into joy as he smiled. He was glad that he'd managed to make some important progress before the festival started, and a proper observation hockey was going to be really useful. Midoriya's gaze turned to his lower left arm. It was no longer covered in bandages, but what it had instead was a scar that took similar shape to the roots of a tree. 
It was from the decay that Shigaraki had briefly used on him, and it served to remind him that the villain was still out there, hurting people. He clenched his fist as he quietly muttered, You won't get away from me next time, and you will never mark my body ever again. To both the scar on his arm and the man who gave it to him, Rayleigh could see that Midoriya was determined to bring Shigaraki in, so he only nodded at his student after barely hearing those words. Midoriya nodded back at his master before they both walked out of the forest. Don't forget the opening speech, Rayleigh said. Midoriya shook slightly as he remembered that he's supposed to hold the opening speech for the festival. Right, I forgot about that, the green-haired boy said. Rayleigh got a little annoyed after hearing this as he knocked Midoriya over the head with the hockey-infused club. Ow! What was that for? Midoriya shouted in both pain and anger. But Rayleigh answered by simply saying, Because you're an idiot. Midoriya sighed and didn't bother to argue with his master. He was too tired and he knew why Rayleigh called him an idiot. The green-haired boy almost voiced his agreement to his master's recent statement, as the two of them slowly made their way out of the forest. And that's our video, and I want to thank you all for indulging yourselves in the story thus far. I hope you've enjoyed it. Now, before I go, there's a few things I want to go over. First, we have a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes over the deep facts and lore of a wide variety of animes, it's sure to expand your weep knowledge of all kinds of series, guaranteed. On top of that, we have a third channel called We the Celestials Naruto What Ifs. It's what we do with this channel, but instead in the vast world and lore of Naruto. So go check it out if you're in the mood for some jutsu action. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I want to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We The Celestials, then I want to extend an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being is we only accept members who are 16 years or older to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. Our discord is an all around fantastic place to be, whether you're a fan or looking to join our band of misfits. And so, you know, that's it for today's video. So, thank you all for watching, and please, I'm asking you, have a fantastic day!